um, uh, it wasn't 46, it was 47, uh, that we came to Germany. And then I came to, uh, first to um, uh, first to Frankfurt and then um, uh, and uh, Herxt and then and then to Heidelberg. And um, I'll tell you about that. It, it was it was a wonderful time. It was a pivotal time and um, uh, extremely historically interesting. And we even knew it at the time. Um, just uh, a comment that that um, I'm an army brat from from top to bottom. Uh, I was actually. <laughs> numbers you even forget how many places you've been. Um, next slide. So um, I was thinking, you know, where did the term brat come from? You know, I mean, I mean we all think of, you know, a, you know, a brat. But, uh, uh, you know, is it, there is an army brat. You know, why, why, why that in particular? So there's been a suggestion that I found that's called, um, that it's an acronym from British Regimental Attached Traveler. Uh, that's 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 a possibility. Um, personally, I doubt it a little, but <laughs> I think that's a good explanation. But the other, probably much more likely, is that it's an old English word uh, term for a beggar child. And, wow. Um, given the you know the the, the enormous um, uh, chaos that we all lived in as as brats. Uh, uh, which I'm sure everybody in this room uh, well, you know, knew much too much about. Um, uh, I think that's a really good likelihood for where that term came from, and I, and I kind of like it myself. Um, so, um, in 1947, um, oh, by the way, I meant to mention, um, there has been some sociological research on army, uh, well, on brats in general, but I think mostly on army brats. And it reflects really very well on us in ways that I think, on, honestly, we can feel very good about. 
marriages tend to be much more durable among army brats um, than in the general population. Um, my husband, I'm sure, would be happy to tell you it's because we're so stubborn. <laughs> but um, uh, I mean that that is a, a point of, of considerable honor. And um, and um, uh, in adulthood, there's a, a strong tendency for brats to go into service uh, positions. You know, like teaching, nursing, medicine. You know, uh, you know those, those sorts of, of helper positions. And I think it reflects our life as a child in which we were so focused on um, uh, the service to our, our, to our nation. And in, in my view, that is the fact that as children, we were serving our nation in, in an extremely honorable and uh, somewhat um, heroic way. And, uh, and I really mean that. So um, talking a little bit about how, um, uh, how it was in Europe, um, for us in 1947, we had a very long journey getting to Europe. Um, everybody had to be healthy to get on a ship, and uh, as you saw, there were three of us. We got to Fort Hamilton, um, uh, and we're living in a Quonset hut with a number of other families. And uh, so diarrhea, fever, and rash, uh, none of which you could have if you were to get on one of the transport ships could happen, and um, so we, we were there for quite a long time, uh, and um, in fact, I consider Fort Hamilton one of the places that I lived. Uh, uh, eventually, we got onto a ship. Uh, this was in the fall of 1947, and we, we, we uh, hit such a uh, violent storm in the uh, North Atlantic that we came back. and. Um, uh, and had to, you know, then wait for the next ship. So we finally got over there in the um, uh, in the late fall of, uh, or early winter of 1947. Um, we, um, uh, that was called, we lived in Herxt, which is outside of Frankfurt. And that um, winter was one of the worst of the decade. It was called the Big Freeze, it's known as, it's famous, uh, the, the Big Freeze. And that would have been fifth grade for me if I'd been in school. Um, uh, and um, that, that was the way that was. Um, next slide, honey. Thank you. Um, this is Frankfurt. Uh, Hurst is, uh, is outside of Frankfurt. Um, this really is the way it was. Uh, it was a, it's good that this is a black and white picture because it was a black and white world. I'm not exaggerating the least bit, uh, particularly in the winter. It was black, uh, dirty snow, and uh, uh, that, that was it. Um, by then, um, the main streets had sort of been cleared, but the side streets were still completely rubble, and um, it, was, uh, it was really awful. Um, there was a small housing area in Herxt. Uh, next slide, honey. Thank you. This is, this is Herxt, and uh, this is right outside of uh, my house. Uh, the, um, by the, the American housing, uh, there were about 20 little houses that, uh, sort of row houses that had escaped the bombing. And, um, uh, and uh, the Americans that were there were put up where, you know, where there was housing, that's what we took. And uh, so in Herx there was, there was housing and that, that's where we were. Um, in Frankfurt at that point, uh, things still, there was a, uh, there was a slight, faint smell of rotting in the air um, uh, among the rubble. And I think we all know why that was. And um, so it was, it was um, extremely, extremely grim. Um, all of the PX, commissary, all of that um, was in Frankfurt. And um, it was about a 10 mile trip between Herxt and Frankfurt. So we, were, we really were kind of isolated there. Um, I, I drew one lesson uh, <laughs> that I think uh, everybody here could um, probably buy into, which is do not lose a war. Uh, don't, don't, don't let that happen. Do not, big time, do not let that happen to you. Um, uh, and um, we had armed MPs guarding us at night. Um, it was. Um, uh, 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 the Germans were mostly busy stacking 
bricks. That was what they did, cleaning and stacking bricks. I wasn't aware of them doing anything else. That was what they did. Um, next slide, thank you. Uh, this is the IGA Farben plant in uh, Frankfurt. This was the site at which the German, uh, the military command of, of Germany was held. It's a huge building. This picture doesn't uh, do it justice. It's, it's more like a Pentagon, sort of. It was spared bombing for the purpose of being the uh, U.S. military headquarters. And um, uh, from uh, the child's point of view, it had a wonderful thing. It had open elevators with no doors. Yeah, they continuously slowly, you know, it's like a, an open box, and they slowly go up. So you step, you know, sp smartly on, and uh, and um, uh, and uh, and you don't get caught. You know, and, um, uh, a friend of mine. Um, was there uh, recently, um, uh, it, it, this building, of course, was is now used for something else, utterly else. It is still standing, and it still has the same elevator. Awesome. Uh, uh, so if you're ever in Frankfurt, I have no idea what the what the uh, address is, but I'm sure you can find it. Go and um, uh, jump on and off the elevators, because I'm not aware of there being anything like that anywhere. Um, uh, the um, the Germans were sick, hungry, and cold, and they were living in the most amazing scrambled together pretenses of housing. You know, you could not believe um, uh, that that you know that, that anybody could even live in it. Um, uh, sanitation was marginal. Uh, everything had a sort of a sour smell of uh, failure to wash much. Um, next slide. This is a fire at the Farben plant in Inhurst. Uh, this was a, the Farben company was a huge company with many buildings, and uh, this is the Herbst one. Um, I just um, put it up to you know for you to get an idea of what the uh, what those buildings look like. Next slide. This is a scene that we uh, that I saw um, many many times at the uh, Bahnhof in both Frankfurt and in Heidelberg. Uh, what was happening here is that there were uh, drips and drabs of the prisoners from the east. The, the Germans who had been taken prisoner in the east would, uh, were were coming back. And um, uh, um, remember, this is extremely pre-internet, uh, of course. And so the business of finding out where anybody was uh, after the chaos of all of this was a very hit or miss process. And um, what was happening is uh, the, uh, it would be announced that the, the, one of the trains bringing uh, another one of the dribs and drabs of the prisoners coming back um, was going to be coming in. And everybody who was missing somebody uh, who had served in the East, uh, which is a whole lot of people, um, would be down at the train station with pictures of, of the person who was, who was missing and begging the people getting off the train if they would please look at these pictures and let them know if they knew anything. Had they served with them? Had they died? Did they know anything about what had happened? Because an awful lot of the men of the German um, army that had served in the East simply disappeared. And uh, so that people mostly didn't know. The other thing that was happening a lot at that time was that um, in the in the rubble um, there were notes um, and those notes were uh, it's the same thing they were notes um, uh, you know dear, dear Jurgen um, uh, I've gone to stay with your sister in uh, uh, in uh, Rotenberg um, uh, come come immediately I'm in such trouble um, uh, you know uh, dear you know. To anybody who comes here, have you seen anything of so and so? Um, I'm missing both my children. You know that 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 sort of thing. Uh, so the, these these weather beaten notes were throughout the the rubble uh, in the areas people are trying trying to find out where 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 the where the rest of their family and the people they cared about were. So on top of these. Um, other very bad things were happening at the time. 
uh, my dad had been a battalion um, commander in Patton's army, and he had ended the war in um, the middle of Czechoslovakia. And um, I don't know if everybody here knows how far it was that the American army was at the end of World War II, but they were at the far side of Czechoslovakia. Um, and then they had been compelled to retreat due to the agreements at Yalta. And my dad was, uh, he, he thoroughly despised um, the, um, uh, th that retreat. And furthermore, he particularly despised the business that we had abandoned the Poles and the Czechs um, uh, during that decision. So he, um, now what was happening is that there were German prisoners of war that were now being repatriated from Germany back to Russia, and they knew uh, correctly that they faced being murdered and imprisoned when they got there. And um, American troops were having to force these uh, people onto the transports to return them. And Dad used to come home just seething um, uh, at, uh, at at the at the whole scene, you know, of, of the use of American troops um, uh, for this purpose. It was extremely frustrating. Um, uh, so there were riots, uh, suicides, um, all of that sort of thing. Um, for me, I was uh, very homesick. Uh, I didn't know how how everybody else felt when they first went overseas, but for me, it was it was difficult. Um, early in 1948, I started in fifth grade in uh, Frankfurt. Um, it was, um, as I said, ten, 10 miles away. It was a terrible winter and there was ice and there was a, um, uh, a bus wreck and um, there were bad injuries among, the, not me fortunately, but um, of the other students who were being bused. And um, so since we were in one of the remoter areas uh, being bused in, they ceased busing children uh, into the school. So that was the end of fifth grade. Um, uh, I spent the rest of that year, uh, what would have been fifth grade, um, sort of bundled in the attic. There was one other girl my age in our housing area, uh, Patty Blakesley. And uh, speaking of uh, looking for friends, if anybody knows what happened to <laughs> Patty Blakesley, uh, I, I'm all ears. Right. Um, and um, so uh, uh, we, um, uh, we drank hot chocolate and played um, cutthroat, uh, um, uh, championship monopoly and, uh, uh, for the rest of that of that school year. Um, early life there it was very intense. There was um, it was a barter and black market economy. I think everybody knows that uh, that it's a cigarette economy. Um, to say it's a cigarette economy can't possibly describe it. Uh, for instance, a carton of cigarettes would pay for a month for a child to enter one of the sanitaria, which were around to uh, care for children and, and adults for that matter, who had nutritional deficiencies. And of course the nutritional deficiencies were terrible. And, um, but a, a carton of cigarettes would pay for a child for a whole month uh, for that kind of service. Um, cash was trash. Uh, nobody wanted cash. Um, uh, it, was, it was barter and cigarettes. That's 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 um, that's what every that that's the way it was, and um, uh, that was also uh, um, anything that the Americans did with the Germans was the same. You know, we used cigarettes for um, if we were purchasing something from from the Germans, uh, it was uh, not in our PX. But um, if we were uh, buying something on the German economy, it was with cigarettes. Um, the, um, the Germans were hungry. Uh, we were certainly not hungry. Uh, 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 there was, um, uh, uh, you know, that was certainly not an issue for us. However, we were forbidden to buy food off the German economy. Uh, that was forbidden. So um, consequently, um, uh, what we had was very, very limited. Uh, we had um, uh, uh, we had uh, powdered milk, uh, powdered eggs. Uh, uh, we occasionally would have a shipment from uh, the Netherlands, but not very often. 
Uh, we had nasty tasting um, uh, orange juice uh, imported from the States. Uh, we had um, uh, spam. We had um, uh, 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 frozen hamburger, we had uh, frozen steaks, and above all, we had frozen turkeys. We had, fro we had frozen turkeys. Oh, the wazoo. <laughs> So um, uh, we um, had um, roasted turkey, turkey fricassee, uh, turkey sandwiches, turkey pot pie, turkey stew, turkey casserole, turkey gumbo, turkey a la king, turkey on spaghetti, turkey mystery, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, a turkey magic recipe. <laughs> And the end result of this was that I had honestly overdosed on turkey for the rest of my life. Um, uh, however, um, my, my family is kind of classical, and, and they really did want turkey for Thanksgiving. And uh, so for a long time, um, I would make, you know, I'd make a, a, a roast or, you know, something, but not turkey. And eventually, my, my brilliant husband finally wanted Push along? Yes. Uh, um, so we have a, a roast beef here, standing rib roast, uh, and it came in with turkey legs. <laughs> Um, I was recovering from homesick disease and um, uh, life was uh, looking up. However, uh, things were getting actually much worse internationally. Um, and um, our new and very bad relations with the Russians were um, uh, leading quickly into the Berlin airlift, uh, the, the, the siege of Berlin and, and the Berlin airlift. Um, the Army was urging American families to leave, and I got to say goodbye to uh, the few friends that I did have, um, uh, and a, a lot of families did return to the States, and you can see why that should be. But um, my mother was adamant that she was not going to do that because of the very long separation they'd had during the war, and um, uh, and she was, she was not going to do that. So. Um, we went to um, Villersville in Switzerland. Uh, Bob, next please. Thank you. Um, this is um, uh, it was it was it was lovely. Um, uh, again, uh, I'll sort of summarize my schooling in a few minutes. But uh, we were in the no school mode again, as usual. Um, uh, in in Switzerland, I did I I, my, I did some tutoring of the of my younger brother. Uh, that's that's Bench there, and uh, that's my baby brother is getting more grown up, uh, Robbie. And uh, these are children of other families that were also sheltering in Switzerland at the time. And um, uh, so we used to we used to do communal reading, and uh, we even did some math and things like that. Uh, we we it, this was do it yourself schooling. Um, uh, yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, uh, we stayed, um, uh, next slide, yeah, this is, uh, uh, I mean, this was not hardship duty for us, <laughs> <laughs> this was just fine. Uh, this, this is Patty Blakesley, uh, they, they were, they were, and her, this is my little brother and her little brother, and uh, they, they were sheltering there at, at the same time, so it was very nice from, from that point of view. Uh, and uh, next slide. And uh, uh, this is this is my uh, my my little brother, and um, this is in the spring there. And uh, so, like I said, that this was this is pretty okay. Um, so um, uh, um, we um, we returned and um, um, we returned and because of the possibility of a, or even likelihood at the time, um, of, a, um, uh, of a rapid um, uh, invasion from the east, 
what we did was uh, we made plans for if that was going to occur. Uh, both, um, both from when we were in um, uh, in uh, Hearst and also in Heidelberg, uh, um, these plans were active for the best part of a year. Uh, we had jerry cans in the car. Uh, we had two routes planned to both uh, Switzerland and France uh, through through side roads, assuming that the autobahn would be just a parking lot. And um, uh, I had a crate in the um, a trunk for my cat, who I was not about to leave. And um, and we had uh, we had midnight drills. Uh, we had two of them to see if we could actually. Uh, get ourselves um, uh, uh, into the car and off uh, um, really quickly, and the answer was we could. Um, so, um, but bad as that crisis was, um, it had a terrifically huge positive effect, uh, which uh, which we understood as children also. Um, before the Berlin Airlift, uh, we had been the conquerors. Um, the um, uh, uh, and somewhat angry about that, and um, the Germans had been very, uh, the, you know, the, the massively defeated, uh, uh, very subservient, very nervous about us, very unsure about how dangerous we were, and uh, uh, with the airlift, um, uh, they discovered that we intended to defend their their capital city, and and. Western Europe as a whole, uh, that had not been clear, you know, because of, of the Alta agreements, it had not been clear that we intended to uh, maintain Western Europe, and uh, it became clear, clear that we did. And um, at the same time, the Americans realized that we had to have the Germans. Uh, furthermore, uh, not only did we have to have them, but by then, um, there had been enough of um, working together that it was clear that uh, they, you know, whatever uh, evil madness had happened to them in the 30s and 40s, um, nevertheless, uh, they were smart, uh, uh, um, probably honest, and certainly very hardworking, and um, and it transformed the relationship completely, absolutely transformed it. So after that, um, really the the personal relations as well as the sort of the attitudinal relations changed and um, uh, they became uh, uh, colleagues and that's probably what you experienced um, I think when, when you were there I mean I think that prob probably the you know the the, the, the sense of um, vengeance against uh, Germans and and um, a, a sense of, of um, anger at their behavior uh, had you know that 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 put itself aside very quickly. And um, and that really, I think, I'm not sure if it would have happened if it weren't for the Berlin Airlift. I mean, that was, that was, that was very fast, and it happened very, very um, successfully. Um, so in the summer of 1948, um, the center of the American command in Germany moved to Heidelberg. So we're finally, you know, the reason I'm here. <laughs> and, um, uh, and uh, and for me, for sixth grade, uh, uh, we we get to sixth grade. So in my schooling, um, uh, I, I know that a lot of people here probably have the same kind of history. Um, I I don't remember first grade very much. I had a wonderful second grade. I had a genius of a teacher. I learned to read, uh, and this was by the way in a one room, four class schoolroom in northern Florida. We had. First, second, third, and fourth grades were all taught by one one teacher in in that room, and um, uh, and I learned to read there. And that was her goal: is that um, is that we all learn to read, and she and she knew how to do that. Um, so that had been wonderful. Uh, third grade had been a complete washout because of, of moving. I'm not even sure I did. Um, um, <laughs> Uh, fourth, fourth grade, I had I had been in our home in in Minnesota, um, and um, this was during the war, and um, and I probably had a pretty much of a of a real year there. Fifth grade, uh, as I've already pretty much described that, uh, we get to sixth grade uh, where I was in Heidelberg, and this will be a real year, and then seventh grade is a washout, and then eighth grade I had in Heidelberg. So it's sort of like alternate years of schooling. <laughs> 
anyway, um, uh, so we got to this gorgeous place, uh, Heidelberg, and also um, I was very grateful, and I am today, to the US military for the school. I mean, it was a wonderful school, uh, really fine, very classical education, and, and I, I thank everybody. Um, next slide. Absolutely. Um, in Heidelberg, um, so I'm by now pre-adolescent, um, we had the most extreme independence and freedom that you could possibly imagine. Next slide. Um, okay. um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to this in a second. Um, we could do anything. We could bicycle. Um, uh, we were on our own. Uh, uh, what would happen is after school, a little click of, of, of the girls would get together and decide what we want to do, and then we go do it. Um, uh, parental supervision, I, I wouldn't know what that was. <laughs> um, uh, we, were, we were feral children. <laughs> Basketball, softball, uh, music, there, there just were no boundaries. Uh, you had to be home for dinner, um, but the ID card and um, was the key. Uh, US buses, trains, uh, everything. Uh, um, uh, everything was something along the line of free, and um, uh, the only danger was our uh, flawed judgment. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I do remember. Uh, one day, for instance, uh, one of our friends, um, when we were going to go horseback riding, how am I doing on time? Are, are we okay? Okay. Um, uh, we were going horseback riding, and this was one of the girls who had not gone with us before, and we were saying, oh, oh yeah, come, you, come, you have to come. Uh, you, uh, of course you're coming. Uh, well, that's where we're going. You know, come. Well, you know, I'm allergic to horses. I, 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 I don't think I should. Don't be silly. Come. Oh, you're coming. No. And um, so we, we simply utterly overrode, uh, you know, being, being the, you know, the ignoramuses that we were. And, um, so um, uh, we got to the stable, and in about 15 minutes, she's, she's, she's having trouble breathing. And, um, uh, and and we're doing helpful things like, would you like a glass of water? And uh, you know, let me pat your forehead. And, uh, uh, and she said, you know, I think I should go. I think my mother will know what to do. And, um, and, and, and uh, well, the stables were, weren't, weren't in the middle of town and getting her back wasn't so easy. She did survive, uh, but um, uh, I mean, it was things like that. When I say no supervision, you know, this is, um, it was, it was, that was the way it was. Uh, entertainment there, um, we, we did it ourselves. Um, there was the Armed Forces um, uh, Network, uh, which had mostly home, uh, you know, Bob Hope uh, show, um, radio drama, long, you know, Long Ranger, uh, Green Hornet. Um, and there was a, an absolutely amazing bus culture. Um, there was no American center there. Uh, the housing was, totally spread out. Um, uh, mostly the generals were up uh, by the castle, and mostly the, um, and I think that this was an era where I think it was officers' families. I think that was what was happening. Um, so, and, uh, and, and the, the, you know, the, the lower ranking officers, so my dad was a colonel at that point, were on the other side of the uh, river. Um, uh, and we, um, uh, so we were totally spread out, and the buses went everywhere. They went constantly everywhere, small buses. Um, and I know that they think they were uh, there to take um, uh, military personnel. Right? Right. But we viewed it as a, uh, a social platform. And, um, uh, we were very competitive, and the issue was did we know every stanza of every song? And, um, 
Uh, and so if there were adults on the bus, we'd sort of quietly sit in the back and sing a little quietly. Uh, but if we had the bus to ourselves, we just really belt it out. And, um, uh, and, and that, I mean, it, we spent a lot of time on the buses. Um, so that was, um, that was a big part of, of um, uh, uh, what, what, you know, how, how we did it. Uh, and um, uh, it, it, was, it was absolutely amazing. Um, a lot of the songs I can, you know, still remember, you know, uh, Slow Boat to China and uh, um, uh, every, everything that um, Joe Stafford ever sang, uh, uh, Frankie, um, it, was, it was just amazing. There were movies at home, uh, in the various homes, uh, uh, you just sign up with the military, they they bring them by, and the parents and kids would just all, um, you know, you'd have a party and um, you'd just all hang out. Um, it, was, it was very nice. Um, frankly, the, the military, the Army worried about our morale, and probably our heads would have exploded if it had been any better. <laughs> um, what was happening then? Also, part of the big picture was um, uh, we we knew what was happening. Um, the um, uh, there was uh, my parents and all the parents I knew had parties a lot, and these were supremely serious events going on uh, because these were parties of of the people who were really advising um, Washington about how things were and what was happening and what was needed. And these were the people who would be implementing any decisions. Now these were, these were discussed at great length. And um, so a couple of things were happening. Uh, the world, of course, had moved from multiple centers of big power to two superpowers. And that was kind of a, you know an awkward transition that was going on then. And, um, uh, um, uh, emphatically, what was happening at the same time was, um, uh, remember the U.S. military had gone from this tiny, weak, pre-war military, I mean it was no, nowhere, um, uh, had this huge buildup, uh, become this massively powerful force, and, um, and victorious, and gone from there into the Berlin crisis, uh, the conflict with uh, Russia, uh, and now the Cold War. And, um, and during these parties, all of these issues were talked about in depth, and we all knew it. You know, the kids knew it, and we, we talked about that. The, I mean, this, this was unsubtle. Uh, we, were, we were aware of it. Uh, so we were aware that this was, um, you know, a pivotal time and big things were happening. Um, the, um, this is the school, um, our, um, I think, I don't know where the first four grades were. They might have been there, but I'm not so sure about that. Um, fifth through eighth, um, so I was there at six, and then I'll tell you, uh, I left for a year and then back for eighth grade. We had an entrance over here, and um, we never saw the high school students, never. Um, I don't really know why. In retrospect, that's very surprising. Um, I, I think they came in on another street, <coughs> on, this, on the other street. This is a huge building that's got wings on the other side of it. And I think the high school students came in on the far side over, over there. And, um, and um, we, we just didn't cut, in fact, I never heard them. You know, we weren't aware of them in the hall. We just were not aware of them. Um, however, the dormitories for the kids from the outlying district, we had Heidelberg, Mannheim, and Stuttgart children were here. And um, uh, the dormitories for the boys, for high school who were boarding, were up sort of in, in this loft area. And um, the girls, I think, had a, a house. I think they had a, a house mother and a house, the boarding girls. Um, whether the younger children were boarding, I mean, I know I had classmates from 
Mannheim and Stuttgart, but I can't really tell you if they boarded or if they had to do a daily um, trip. I, I'm not sure how, to, how that worked. Um, these this loft areas, um, uh, um, when, well, one year, the, the um, German fire department, which was very good, decided they were going to have a practice uh, rescue and, um, uh, from a high area. And um, a couple of my classmates volunteered to be rescued. <laughs> and um, the um, uh, and, and the uh, a smoke was used to make it more realistic. And one of the boys got a very bad smoke inhalation. Uh, he did also live through this. I mean, I, I'm sure that you know any any probably any child can tell you know stories of uh, near misses. But this this was another one of them. Um, in early fall of 1949, um, well, I should say a little bit more about the, uh, the school. Um, it, the teachers were excellent. It was a very classical education. Uh, we would start the day with the Pledge to, of, of Allegiance, and, um, um, and um, I remember well uh, a lot of the English literature that we were reading at that point, which uh, which the school was very big on. It, it really was was super. Um, we went to Berlin. Um, next slide, honey. Okay, this is our recreational pass. This is the this is the secret to life, and uh, <laughs> uh, you use this. Um, you know this this is all you needed. Uh, next slide. Yeah, this is uh, horseback riding. Um, uh, if you were in the mood, um, next slide. Uh, you want to um, ride down the Necker, and there are little boats. Uh, these are free, and uh, you just wow. use your ID and pass. Um, uh, one one year, I broke my finger very badly, and it had to be cared for in the in the um, uh, in the hospital in Frankfurt, and so I had to go back and forth on the on the train. You know, it was just no problem. Next slide. And this was uh, this was the cost of a movie, uh, but uh, oh, wow. after you pay, this is a script that, which we used. Uh, after you paid, does this look familiar? Yeah. 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 Okay. After you paid, um, your uh, ten cents uh, food was inside for free. Um, and um, uh, uh, I don't know how long that lasted, but it, it was the case at the time. Next slide. Okay, so we were in Berlin for a bit. Um, I have no idea where we were. Uh, this is from my little little camera. I took this. Um, uh, uh, this is one of the main, you know, former uh, places. And um, again, streets were just opening. Um, these. Houses. I don't know if anybody's seen these, but you know that you see bathtubs falling off the edges and things like that. By now, most of that had been cleaned up, and the bathtubs had been re, you know, claimed for other purposes. And as you can see, they're beginning to, you know, get some of the debris kind of organized. Uh, next slide. Uh, this was near where we were living, um, and. Um, You've got stacked bricks over here. I'm going to show you a close-up of this in a minute. Um, these are two women who are working on bricks, uh, and I'll show you what this is in, in a minute. Uh, next slide. So this is a close-up of that. Uh, I'm sorry, I think it's a little fuzzy, but here's a guy who looks like he's just sort of a sightseer. Here are two women uh, working on uh, cleaning bricks and stacking them. That's, that was still a major occupation. Um, this here that looks like a little hole in under the debris is a home. And um, if you, when we used to go by at night, um, you'd see a little peak of light and a little um, little curl of smoke. And uh, people are living in there because that's what we had. You know that that was the way it was. Um, so this is Berlin at that at that point. Berlin was rubble. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I, I don't remember anything other than rubble in Berlin with um, very rare uh, housing standing. Um, in late uh, fall of 1940, so that was early fall of 1949, um, 
the Berlin airlift had ended. Uh, not too much before, but it had ended. Uh, late fall 1949, uh, for me, would be seventh grade. Uh, we moved to France where dad was writing, helping to write protocols for NATO. And um, uh, so, you know, in a more personal way, how, how many of you have lost a pet during a move? You know, during the chaos of, of, of the movers, you know, some, some pet has gotten lost. Does that happen to anybody? Yeah, it, it happened, right, right. I mean, it's, it's really hard. So it happened to, to me. Um, my, uh, the cat I'd been given in Switzerland uh, uh, was then uh, living with us, of course, and she got, um, she got free. We were, our house in, in Heidelberg, the first house in Heidelberg, was up the hill from the Max Planck Institute, uh, and it was fields. And um, so, so Kitty liked to go out there hunting, um, and um, she she was let out of the closet where she was supposed to be uh, being kept, and she disappeared. Um, Nancy um, Nancy Reed was my best friend. She lived across the street. She looked out for the cat and uh, wrote me that pussy was okay. Um, and um, uh, so um, so we we went to Fontainebleau in France. Um, in France, the, we were in a little village outside of Fontainebleau, Marlotte, and the teacher spoke English, uh, spoke uh, German and French, and I spoke German and English. And so the teacher uh, would have to break off from the class and, you know, and to explain to me in German what was going on. Uh, and it was for me a bad dynamic. I, I didn't like it. You know, everybody knew I was American but I, I just didn't like that. And so by then I was in such a state of um, uh, independent, uh, you know, um, by independence by necessity, I refused to go. And um, uh, so I had a, I had a, you know, a, a home reading plan uh, uh, for the year. Uh, the principle, you can't, it's not legal to not have, a, you know, the children have to be taught in France. And uh, so the principal would come by once a month, have a very long lunch with my parents with lots of drinking, and um, <laughs> check out what I was doing, and um, um, and that that was that was that year. Uh, next slide. Uh, Dad was given the French Legion of Honor award for for. This was for work done during World War II as well as uh, while he was in France. And uh, so that's, that's key right there. Um, so um, that's the end of seventh grade. 1950-51, um, uh, we were back in Heidelberg uh, for me for eighth grade. And um, it was um, a full year and I miraculously graduated like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, is, this is grade school graduation. Um, uh, the cat was very happy to see me. Uh, she she came right up when I went when I called her. But she had had kittens who were wilder than anything, and um, so I decided that they were and they were fat. You know, they were they were really healthy. So I decided they were born free, and I was going to leave them there. So as far as I know, their their progeny are still in the fields there. Um, that year. Um, uh, Eighth grade, there's a lot more sports than there had been two years earlier. Um, uh, next slide. Uh, this was a school trip to Garmisch. Uh, <laughs> not too bad, right? And um, uh, we played basketball and um, a team, uh, our team lost in a major tournament. Uh, German language, of course, was being taught in the school, and uh, it had not been taught in sixth grade. I, I didn't learn German in school. I was, you know, like everybody, picking it up, but I, uh, it hadn't been being taught. Um, eighth grade was a very good uh, formal teaching, um, and we had serviceable skills. Uh, in the bigger picture, by then, the Korean War was heating up, and Dad was worried about um, he, uh, himself and his officers being sent there. Um, I, and by the way, just as a um, interesting, um, our English 
friends were very happy to be stationed in Germany because they were still having very severe rationing in England. And uh, so the, uh, being stationed in Germany was a plum for them. Uh, my graduating class was a large 53. I had 25 in in um, uh, in sixth grade, so we had more, you know, uh, and that of course reflected a lot more uh, of the military families moving in. Um, and I remember we had about seven rows of um, of uh, of um, uh, chairs, and so we were definitely outgrowing the space. We were in one room and um, we were outgrowing the space. And um, I now realize that we were the last class to be in this building. After that, um, I, I think that an American village was, was um, built so that people weren't just all over the place. And um, the American school was built for that purpose. And um, a lot of the sort of more recognizable structures of an American uh, unit were, were built. Um, but all of that came shortly after we left, but it did come after we left. Um, next slide. Yeah, this is the graduating photo. Um, I'm, I'm sure nobody here is in the photo. And um, as you see, there are only about 20, although there are 53 graduating, there were only about 20 in the photo, and uh, including I'm not there. And I think that the, you know, the usual chaos of coming and going uh, was, was active during this. Um, uh, but it's, uh, you know, this is, this is eighth grade um, in 1951. Um, um, so um, I have to say, I, I never did get good at leaving places, and um, departures um, there were were no different. Um, it was wrenching and agonizing, and you know, and we left in a with me in a river of tears. Um, um, the uh, the plan was, uh, and the usual chaos. Uh, the plan was that we were driving from Heidelberg. Um, through uh, uh, Southern Europe um, to take a, a ship in Trieste, which is at the peak of the Adriatic um, between um, uh, Italy and Yugoslavia. And um, driving, had to drive through U Yugoslavia. Uh, so we had some car trouble and I think there was a, by the way, a civil war going on in Yugoslavia, <laughs> and um, we missed we missed the ship. Uh, we simply missed the ship. Um, uh, well, okay. Um, next slide, honey. Uh, this is the uh, commencement um, announcement, and um, the next one. This is the list of our graduates, including the people from Karlsruhe, uh, Karlsruhe and uh, Mannheim. Um, and um, so next slide. So um, we missed the ship and that meant that we had uh, about eight days until the next ship would come. And we spent it in the most opulently wonderful place. This is, um, uh, it was warm, uh, the Adriatic was incredible. Uh, we were staying, um, this is a castle, this is a beautiful castle. This is in a little town that's just on the outskirts of Trieste. And at the time, it was an American military installation that was used both for administrative purposes, but it also had some very nice rooms for uh, traveling um, uh, um, personnel. And uh, so we, we got the use of them. And uh, so um, uh, it was like pre-war so, you know, it was like royalty. Uh, and we, we spent our days just sort of bopping around in the ocean there. And uh, next next slide. Uh, so that was then. Uh, this is the same place now. Um, that little corner where we were, where my brother and I were sitting is right here. Uh, this is a, um, a recent photo and you can see that it's been very nicely kept up and, um, uh, and it's, it was just an amazing place. Um, so I, you know, I'll say that I would not exchange having had my youth as a brat for anything. Um, and I'm really endlessly grateful. 
um, to have, had the chance to be there then and to be able to think about those events uh, from the point of view of uh, a bit of a participant. Uh, it, it is very different uh, from, from those points of view. Um, I, and I'm very grateful to have had this chance to um, uh, summarize some of, some of this. Um, next slide. So I found this, uh, I, I found this uh, on the internet and I thought, well, this just says it all. Uh, happiness is being a military brat and, and I really, I really do do think it, it, it's extraordinary. Um, uh, my uh, my deep thanks to all of you for um, you know for listening with the special ability you have to you know to to listen yeah. to this. Uh, no, no other group can do this. <laughs> it's like we came from another planet, you know, and, and and the only people are you know are, are you who are here. Um, it, I, I think it was a life of um, real hardships um, and uh, terrific privilege. Um, uh, fairly few, very few people get to serve their nation as overtly as children as I think we did. Um, I, I, I do honestly believe that um, uh, if any of us had, had not been able to be um, uh, the people we were as children, uh, help our families um, do what needed to be done, uh, that our families would not have been able to, um, uh, uh, to, to serve the nation. And I feel that, that uh, everybody here deserves you know, to feel extremely good about your role in this. And um, above all, thank you for making and strengthening the Heidelberg High School.